This is Rezvan from Cognitive SEO and today I have Bill Slowski. I hope I pronounced his, uh, his name correctly. He is a veteran in the SEO industry. I will uh, briefly introduce him. He has a bachelor in arts degree in English from the University of Delaware and a Juris Doctor degree from the Widener University School of Law. He worked at the highest level trial court in Delaware, Superior Court of Delaware, for 14 years as a court manager and administrator and as a technologist in, uh, and management analyst. He found himself intrigued by search engines, by usability and by how people navigate around and explore web pages. He continued his efforts performing SEO and internet marketing part-time until 2005 when he left the court to work for an online marketing agency uh, full-time. Now he writes about SEO and patents, mostly at the SEO by the Sea blog that he owns and he is a director of search marketing at GoFish Digital. I hope I introduced you correctly, Bill. And again, welcome to our podcast. I invite you to say a few words about uh, about yourself and uh, start this. Well, thank you for having me here. I started promoting websites in 1996, which is a lifetime ago. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard to believe how, how much before the web, Google. how much the web has grown, right. Around the time that Yahoo started out, Ben and Jerry's Guide to the Internet. It's mm -hmm. hard to believe that uh, it's grown that much and that Yahoo uh, has gone through what it's gone through, being sold mm -hmm. to Verizon and being three billion people being hacked last year. It's amazing. Yeah, a lot of security problems uh, lately. Systems go so complex that vulnerabilities are more and more in this complexity i think uh, in any system right uh equifax being hacked this past year and the irs hiring them as an as a consultant which is <laughs> hard to believe yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Bill, you've been uh, working in the professional SEO uh, field from my understanding and internet marketing since 1996. Right. How has the SEO world, how was the SEO world looking back then? And how would you compare it to how it is, uh, how it is today? I was thinking about that and uh... It's like when you go to a conference and you're one of the first people there and all the seats are still empty and there's not much discussion going on. That's what the SEO world was like back then. I, but it I was very easy to, to rank at, the, at that time with any, any site, I think. I remember, the day. I remember uh, happening upon an SEO forum and just being a lurker, just mm. looking at what everybody was talking about and thinking, this is a strange career. I'm not sure I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, you did it. <laughs> in the end, I did it. In the end, I had, uh, I, I started out working, promoting the website for a couple of friends who started a business. And so helping them uh, succeed in business was a pretty good motivation. Uh, okay. They uh, started a site that helped people incorporate their businesses mm -hmm. and say one of the best links I got for their site was uh, in a Polish classified site. I posted a link to their site and it, it actually brought them business from shipping companies in Latvia and Estonia uh -huh, uh -huh. that uh -huh. were creating about 10 companies a week because they were incorporating each ship that was bringing uh -huh. cargo to the US uh -huh. or to uh -huh. South America. 
uh, which was great for their business. Yeah, a lot of leads. Yeah. And it, leads. well, leads that were actually buying their services. Yeah, you know, that that helps when you're just starting a business. Yeah, I agree. And how would you compare it the SEO world as it was then to what it is now? How much has it evolved or changed or and how do you think it will change in the next 10, 10 years or 20 years? It's a good question. Uh We've changed in how we communicate ideas and concepts. We're, we're focusing more on talking to each other through social media, through Facebook groups, through Twitter, and so on, than uh, we used to. We used to use forums a lot more uh, 10 years ago. Uh, not as much now. So I think, mm -hmm. I think places like uh, Webmaster World tend to still be pretty active. Uh, see, uh, ideas being shared uh, and some concepts that are, that are uh, a little difficult to uh, grasp in some ways, like uh, how artificial intelligence influences uh, promotion of websites and rankings of websites. Mm -hmm. um, I'm busy right now putting together a presentation for uh, PubCon in five weeks and okay. one of the uh, I'm, I'm talking about keyword research using context vectors and topical modeling using okay. co co-occurring phrases which okay. maybe isn't too different from what things were like ten years ago I think uh, it. We know a little bit more about those types of things than we did then, but I think the competition now is also much much stronger in any niche on the internet because the adoption of the internet has grown everywhere on the world more, much more compared to ten years ago. And this also increases the changes, the landscape when we are talking about SEO and uh, any particular marketing tactic, I think. Um, we've, also, we've also got to uh, figure out how to fit things like these into our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a mobile most first. of the people figured out already. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, creating a website for a phone is different than surely it is. But creating one well, all of the sites are, are are almost created for, for for phones, and Google is pushing more and more in this area with their mobile uh, index. And uh... right, they, they maybe seem to be pushing some things a little bit too far, like accelerated mobile pages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's your opinion on uh, AMP? I don't like the abbreviated versions of HTML and Java that fuel those things. I understand the desire for speed, but uh, I don't like the idea of... You think it's closing the ecosystem? It's uh, it's moving it on the on the Google's uh, on the Google side and it's not okay from an organic point of view of the internet or why? I, I saw a patent from Apple in their version of accelerated mobile pages mm -hmm. and I wondered if that would only be released on Safari browsers uh, mm -hmm. I was wondering you know uh, is Google making the web more proprietary by releasing app pages, excluding other people. Uh, is it, you know, we have uh, instant news pages from Facebook, same type of thing. Everybody's releasing their own version of HTML. Do we really need that? Do we really need 
it to be fragmented like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Not sure what to say. What to say here? There are pros and cons for for all of the all of the all of the sides. Um, coming back to our days, what's your opinion on the top five search ranking uh, signals at the moment <laughs> for Google? If, I would, if, there, I would, if there are any ranking signal, uh, signals in your opinion. I was surprised when Google came out uh, and announced RankBrain and said it was third most popular ranking signal at Google mm -hmm. and was wondering how they could say that. And of did course, they say that? They, they did they say that. that through a representative of uh, them? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, they said that and I, I asked it uh, in a uh, Google Hangout on Air, uh, what were the first two? And the, the answer uh, was links and content. Okay. And and recently, uh, we've heard uh, uh, Gary and John from Google say mm -hmm. that there are no top three. That that the ranking signals vary and depend upon the query, which has always been true. Mm. I mean, everything, everything coming from Google is is uh, confusion, is uh, is changing. <laughs> is, uh, so I'm not sure what we should believe exactly from what they're what they're saying. They have their own agenda that they want to push, and uh, we need to to take each of their words carefully. It's true. There's so much complexity in. Uh... I mean, you think about uh, when you do a search for something that's more news oriented and if it's really new, timely information, it hasn't had time to develop a lot of links. Correct, yeah. So links aren't the most important ranking signal for something that's newsworthy. Uh, freshness is. Yeah. Right? Uh, for something that, that is a little bit more mature, that has had the chance to develop and grow and have people write about it and link to it and so on, links are more important. I mean, because people are mm -hmm. showing that they appreciate certain content, find it useful, find it valuable, and link to it. Uh, so the content's got a lot of value and links to things still have value and uh, we haven't had a page rank toolbar indicator for a few years but uh -huh. Google's still using page rank to rank web pages it seems I mean links do appear to have an influence on how well something ranks when we develop lots of links yeah, to a page it does rank higher I agree yeah and when you were saying about the freshness, what I usually see is that you publish something uh, on a blog or on a site, on a news site, and it's it ranks for a day or two, and then it goes uh, it goes uh, it goes down. Uh, but even with the freshness factor, I think that it matters a lot the authority of the main site that is publishing that content in order to in order to be able to rank for competitive uh, the, uh, competitive terms in the news area of their uh, of, of, the, of the search engine I mean not any site that will publish a, a blog post or a news story will be able to rank for the same uh, for the same keywords there right Google's uh, fighting off some problems they've been having like uh the whole fake news type thing mm -hmm. that was happening. Mm -hmm. uh, they do want to have uh, authoritative sites showing up highly and they're boosting authoritative sites and search results. If there isn't 
an authoritative enough uh, result for a query, they might uh, perform a second query with with a, a, a query refinement that <laughs> that uh, shows for the query that you chose. And if there are any authoritative results for uh, query refinements that are showing, they may mix those into the results that you see for your original query. Uh, mm -hmm. It may be not be 100% on point as relevant as it would have been if it was using the original query, but it may be a more authoritative site, which is what they're aiming for. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. Um, so, for the top five search ranking signals, to conclude, which ones do you think are the most important uh, now? In your opinion? In my opinion, if we... Uh, it's still hard to say because it still depends upon the query. Uh, the aim the goal isn't to provide the most relevant results. It's to provide the results that tend to best satisfy uh, a searcher's situation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. information intents. Mm -hmm. So if I search for lunch around noontime, I'm looking for a, a local restaurant. I don't want. Uh, yeah, the intent is different with uh, with every with every every search. But in general, let's say, if, I don't know, for commercial queries and for informational queries, which do you think are the top five search ranking signals? I think uh, the Webmaster Guidelines got that right when they started talking about eat. Expertise, mm -hmm. authoritativeness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and trustworthiness. I think we're going to see uh, trustworthiness grow as a signal. Okay. And trustworthiness uh, grows based on the links, links signal or other signals? Users, interactivity with the sites? Are you familiar with the white paper that came out a couple years ago on knowledge-based trust? Mm, I think I read something uh, from, it, from it, it had it had to do with the knowledge vault mm -hmm. and they were talking about how uh, uh, accurate facts were that showed up in search results you know when when uh, we have featured snippets that appear that are yeah. just plain plain wrong and that's happened a few times like uh, recently uh, the shooter in Las Vegas, uh, uh, there was a featured snippet at Google that uh, was coming from some site and it misidentified the person who was the main suspect. Oh. And you know, you don't want yeah. that type of misinformation taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, so having more accurate uh, answers that are trusting, trustworthy, is important and growing in importance. Uh, you know, when when we're uh, see the people at Stone Temple Consulting have been doing a series of studies involving the growth of featured snippets, mm -hmm. and they do seem to be growing significantly. Uh, when uh, a search engine would rather show you a paragraph or a bullet list as an answer to a, a query uh, rather than a list of uh, web pages, uh, we've seen a transformation in search. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. we, are, we are seeing that happen. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you write a lot about patterns and uh, in the SEO, SEO industry, I believe because of your uh, background in... Uh, it it has, 
it has to do more with my background as an SEO. I was, I was, I was uh, in-house SEO for a company in Delaware that was incorporating businesses, mm -hmm. and I came across a patent that talked about how you could uh, better optimize pages for location. And that particular business, it was really important that it was located in Delaware because there are uh, legal advantages, tax advantages to being in Delaware. Uh, so most people searching uh, for that business do search for Delaware. So I said, okay, so how can I uh, optimize for location better? And I found a patent that explained in a lot of detail how to do that better. So I said, okay, I'll try this out and see how well it works. And it helped. It made a difference. So I wrote about it in a, a forum that I was a co-administrator at. And when I uh, started my website, I, I said, I should write more about patents. Okay. And I, I did. Uh, yeah, we we all know you in the SEO <laughs> industry to write about SEO patents. Uh, I think you're the only one who who does it. Uh, so uh, on a, on a long term uh, on a long term scale, I mean, um, what's uh, what's the challenge for you when you write an article about uh, about patents? and SEO patterns specifically. I'm really curious. I want to know how everything works. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like the mystery of putting a word into a search box, hitting a button and getting results. I want to have some idea of what's going to show up in those results. So this um, is why it all started with, uh, with the SEO by the C blog. Your yes. curiosity, your curiosity for how Google works, mainly. Okay, sort of you merge two concepts there. Let me backtrack a bit on them. Okay. Uh, the SEO by the C blog I started because I had gone, I'd spoken at a conference in New York City, uh, Search Engine Strategies Conference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in 2005. And I looked at the cost and said, the average SEO individual consultants can't afford to go to this. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to fly out there, uh, pay for a hotel room for a week, and pay for the conference itself. Let me put on a free conference in the town I live in, which was at the time, or the town I worked at, which was Havard Grace, Maryland, on the East Coast, uh, just right, right by the Chesapeake Bay. Okay. When I when I came up with the name for SEO by the Sea, I was looking out the window of the office I worked in, watching sails bobbing up and down on the bay, and that's how I came up with the name SEO by the Sea. Okay. Okay. I, I live in San Diego now, so I'm still the SEO by the sea. I just change seas. <laughs> uh, but uh, so the idea behind that site was uh, to pro provide people information about the conference I was putting on. And I, I uh, did that. I wrote about places to stay, about things to talk about. Okay. Uh, and it came, uh, some people showed up, we talked about SEO. Uh, I think I was, I was a little bit ahead of myself in terms of uh, the idea of having a free conference that people who showed up to attend would also become speakers at, like a bar mm -hmm. camp. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I didn't get hundreds of people showing up. I got less than that, but 
I had a website, uh, and I asked myself after the event, what do I do with this website? I'll keep on writing. I'll write about patents, and so I started doing that. Yeah. And this was happening in what year? It's two thousand and five. Okay. And I liked the fact that I was finding patents that were relevant to what I was doing as an SEO.、Uh, things that gave me ideas on things to test. And things to look for, things to ask questions about,、mm-hmm. uh, things to discuss with other SEOs. Okay, what do you, what what's your favorite patent, or you think is the most interesting, game-changing one、um, that、I'm, comes to your mind now? I'm really excited about、uh, phrase-based indexing. Mm. Which, which yep.、Uh, yep. phrase-based indexing was an idea from、uh, a woman named Anna Patterson, who、uh, wrote the biggest search engine of the 21st century. It was one called Recall, which、uh, was a beta search engine at the Web Archive.、Uh, okay. It, it it covered billions of pages、uh, through lots of versions, lots of、uh, iterations, different years.、Uh, the idea is that、uh, if you index phrases that appear on web pages,、uh, you can. Understand、uh, what the concept, what the topics are of those web pages, by which phrases appear upon the pages.、Mm-hmm. So, so for instance, if you write a page about baseball stadiums, there's a good chance that、uh, certain phrases will show up on that page, like pitcher's mound, outfield, concession stands, home plate.、Uh, And if if you want to, and there were a number of patents from Google that followed up、uh, with phrase-based indexing, that showed it was something they were working on,、uh, like Google's inverted index of the web shows、uh, words that show up and appear on different pages of the web. Well, there there was a phrase-based indexing version of that inverted index. That said, okay, we've indexed phrases that show up on web pages, and you can、uh, find a page by which phrases show up on it,、uh, which I thought was interesting. It showed that Google was actually working on phrase-based indexing.、Uh, one of the phrase-based indexing patents talks about how you how、uh, Pages might be boosted in search results based upon phrases that appear upon them, and、uh, phrases that appear as anchor text that link to other pages.、Uh, so the idea of these body hits, phrases that appear upon pages, and anchor hits.、Uh, Phrases that appear as anchor text to pages, boosting pages,、uh, is something I've, I've experimented with a little bit, and not too many people other than me have been talking about those. There've been some people doing some stuff with、uh, topic modeling to boost、uh-huh. web pages,、uh-huh. and、uh, seen some people、uh, writing about. Successful results. Yeah, we actually did it.、Uh, we actually created a tool、uh, about、uh, that does this kind of topic mod- modeling and analyzes the top ranking results for the query that you're entering, and based on that, uh, 
analyzes the content on your page, compares to everything that's ranking there, makes suggestions based on uh, based on that. And we saw many many uh, quick improvements just by optimizing uh, optimizing your your content, not by doing keyword stuffing or. Uh, just by following the recommendations in terms of using particular topics and keywords that the tool recommends there and uh, if you write it creatively and you do it completely white hat you go to a Google search console once you modify this, the, the page on the site and you ask for a re-indexation mm, there are a lot of situations and you actually see it to go up a couple of positions so if you go from five to three it's a very high increase in a very short matter of a uh, matter of time and uh, we saw we launched this in july and we saw a lot of people um, using it and uh, responding uh, happily to to our support tickets that they had the successful uh, successful increments by by doing this obviously not in every situation and in every market every keyword this this works because i'm very competitive keywords the, the content is not the only let's say signal that can move a uh, position in the index for a phrase search that that easily but for longer term uh, longer term terms it it seems to be to be working uh, to be working okay at least this this model right and the amazing thing is uh that was first written about in 2004 or so mm -hmm. so it's been around for a while yeah yeah it it now it's it's uh, it got more uh in 2004, it was very easy because you just stuffed some keywords there, and you were you were ranking. Now Google has a lot of <laughs> uh, smartness into put into it uh, to detect all this uh, uh, bad behavior from a web master. Let's let's say so. It's much more hard than now to let's say trick Google. And this tool is not about tricking Google. It's actually about uh, it's about understanding Google and how it works, uh, and by uh, reverse engineering what they do to help you uh, and help Google understand those specific uh, that specific content better. When you write content for a page, if you can make that page more about something. Focusing upon the aboutness of mm -hmm. the concepts behind the page, mm -hmm. uh, you're you're improving Google's ability to recognize what you're writing about and return mm -hmm. in results uh, for queries that people perform. Uh, we we've, we've got uh, Google using RankBrain and Hummingbird to uh, better understand queries that people are performing, and if your page uh, fits those concepts best, you're going to be the one showing up in the top results. Uh, yeah. At at your your company, where you're uh, a director, a search director, there, what do you see to be uh, in SEO now uh, working the best for for your client when you work for for your clients what what's uh, the stuff that uh, um, works best for you to improve the clients rankings what kind of uh, what there's, kind of uh, there's, there's so much variety but one thing we've been focusing upon was making sure that uh, Structured data is set up well, and knowledge panels appear for uh, clients, and uh, site maps show up, or okay. site links, site links for pages. Uh, we've been trying to uh, get featured snippets show up. Uh, okay. Did you have any success? Did you have any success in terms of finding a way to? Uh, to make Google uh, transform a normal uh, ranking page into a ranking snippet, featured snippet? We have had success. Uh, okay, but can you replicate it every time it, when you want it? 
it's challenging, but we can, with some success, get featured snippets to appear. Okay, and uh, can you share some of the stuff that you think it's important for a site to have in order to, be, to become a featured snippet? It's not too much different from the old days of SEO. Uh, you, you think about what questions an audience might have for a specific company that provides certain goods or services. What, what questions do they ask? What do they want answers to? Mm -hmm. And you uh, make sure you have pages devoted to that. Uh, you uh, answer the questions. You answer the questions uh, in ways that tend to uh, 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 surgeons like uh, using uh, bulleted lists or tables uh, and those uh, bulleted lists and tables tend to uh, uh, be seen as good answers to those questions. Okay, uh, so you say that we, we need to have uh, questions on the page, bulleted lists, tables, these are some of the characteristics, common characteristics of the snippet pages that uh, we see ranking. Right. You you want the best answers that you, the most direct answers that you can provide. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure they're they're good answers because uh, that does and, make uh, a bit of difference. You're talking now about. Uh, getting a featured snippet for a rank, for a keyword that didn't have a featured snippet before or replacing a competitor's uh, featured snippet because this, uh, these are two different things when there is uh, a query that doesn't have already assigned uh, high, enough high quality content to market as a featured snippet uh, versus the situation when, when Google already decided that this is a very high quality article and I want to rank it for this particular query as a featured snippet. One of the sites we've been working with is a, a, a site that has been doing a, a, a weekly a video for years and they, they have a, a radio show every okay. week uh, they have millions of listeners they talk about financial type news okay and, and they they took all the videos and transcribed them okay and added the uh, transcripts to the pages that the videos appear upon uh, they started getting a lot of uh, featured snippets from those transcripts because uh, uh, Transcripts provide lots of questions and answers. Interesting, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we looked at those, we worked on those a bit. Okay. Uh, make, make, to strengthen the answers, to strengthen the formatting of the answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you saw practically an impact for uh, modified transcription, video transcription on a page to boost it in multiple in multiple snippets right uh, compared to, to to before okay but it did also take down other competitors for the same uh, same keyword where a competitor was ranking with a featured snippet we weren't necessarily aiming at uh, reducing the rankings of competitors we were aiming at uh, being as successful as possible with our own site. Yeah, yeah, I imagine that. But, uh, but uh, I, I was, uh, I was thinking that uh, if already Google decided that a particular page for the featured snippet uh, has a lot of authority and they put it there, it's harder to 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 get your content to be that good to. Put that uh, to put that down because from what I saw, the featured snippets are not as uh, let's say volatile as a as a normal ranking. I mean, they tend to stay there uh, 
more if Google decides that that is a strong, strong page. Is this right. your experience uh, also? The people behind this site were subject matter experts. So when they answered the question, they did it pretty thoroughly. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They were giving good answers. Uh, we may have looked to see if there were other featured snippets that were uh, answering certain questions, but we weren't necessarily focusing only upon uh, answering questions that other people had answered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, I understand. Yeah, so our, our, with, with uh, hundreds of pages or thousands of pages that you had these opportunities with, uh, spending all your time fixated on whether you could add, answer somebody else wasn't necessarily a goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, what do you think is the biggest uh, problem or are the biggest problems that SEO pros face nowadays? Misinformation. Okay. Uh, I think misinformation affects every other aspect of our <laughs> lives. <laughs> In I a way that we cannot measure or imagine. You know, uh, the web has become the information conduit to everybody. It, it's where I go uh, to answer questions. I used to uh, carry a, a card in my wallet with the phone number of a, a local library and I would uh, uh, look up books in the electronic card catalog of that library. I don't do that anymore. I don't look for books first uh, because I, I can just look the information up on the web. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, so, so coming back to the original co uh, question, which are the biggest problems that SEO pros face nowadays? You said misinformation. So, can you elaborate a bit more on on this the misinformation aspect? You think they are going in the wrong direction because of other people writing uh, incorrect stuff on their blogs? sites, whatever. So yeah, the, the web is the greatest source of information in the world. It's also the greatest source of misinformation. There are just many people, it's it's like 10,000 monkeys t try, typing. Uh, one of them is going to come up with Shakespeare at some point, but it's going to be mixed up with a lot of gibberish. And there is a lot of gibberish on the web, unfortunately. Okay. Um, in terms of SEO, in what direction do you think people should stop wasting their energy on? It's a good question. I'm not sure I should answer that with some of my pet peeves, some like uh, uh, I hate when people start talking about things like LSI keywords. Say, okay, do you know what LSI is? Did you ever bother to Google it? it it's it's uh, an approach that Microsoft developed in 1990 to index a static uh, group of documents. Okay. Uh, the web is not static. It changes all the time. For LSI to be used on the web, the web would have to stop. And then as soon as it changed, you'd have to run an LSI indexing program again. It doesn't stop and go like that. Okay. Okay, so LSI keywords is one of the things that you Think people should stop. Should stop, I, I, stop. I, I see people writing uh, Google 200 ranking factors articles saying LSI keywords are one of the ranking factors Google uses. No, they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more of a concept of a 
it's a different thing, I don't think. So. It's, it's the way the index enterprise uh, document collection. Yeah, yeah. SEO is very complex because it's very technical and uh, lots of the people that are writing this stuff aren't technical enough to understand the nuances when it comes to things like the ones that you described here because they take it as uh, gr for granted from other tens of sites that talk about it and consider the the, the thing to be true and that uh, in the end pollutes all this uh, all this uh, stuff it's part of the reason why I like looking at patents so one of the patents I'm going to talk about at my uh, PubCon presentation in about a month or so is okay. on uh, something that uh, Google came up with they call context vectors. Okay. So and they, what's, what are those? Okay. Uh, quick way to describe it. Uh, they say in the patent that a horse to an equestrian is an animal. A horse to a carpenter is a tool that you use when you're building something. A mm -hmm. horse to a gymnast is an exercise implement, something they perform gymnastic uh, feats upon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, based upon the context, which we learn from knowledge bases, uh, the same words could have multiple meanings. Uh, if you can understand the context, if we can understand the context, we can index these better. If uh, so, uh, as a creator of a web page, if you can explain the context better, you have a head start on other people writing about the same things. Okay, so it's all about describing and writing content as. Uh correctly and uh, as, as, as uh, correctly as possible let's say from uh, from from looking at sources like knowledge bases uh, yeah like a Wikipedia or a, a, a depending upon the topic uh, internet movie uh, IMDB mm -hmm. uh, uh, Yahoo Finance is one they use uh, to describe companies Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, interesting. And uh, how do you think Google will, uh, the voice search will evolve, for example? It's a lot of uh, work on speech recognition and uh, understanding conversations better. Uh, yeah, I think they made huge steps in the last years to, to understand speech better and to transcribe. Now you saw that Google uh, launched the, those head, uh, headphones that automatically translate 40 languages. And uh, it's a major leap, uh, step forward uh, compared to, let's say, three years ago uh, when we talked about uh, understanding uh, automatically language so all of these barriers I think it's only time that will uh, because technology evolves so so quickly but how are we going to use the internet via voice and how do you think uh, this the computers will transform and the search engine eventually will will transform based on this because sometimes you now have the phone, but uh, you're not always going to talk to your to, to your phone. It's not, let's say, it's not uh, it's not easy for you. It's easier for you to type at this at this moment from a privacy point of view. Sometimes I don't know, and there are there are a lot of times like this. How do you think? Uh, I've been this? I've been trying a lot of uh, searches using. Google now using the uh, uh, and I'm surprised sometimes by some of the answers, but they 
tend to understand queries really well. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you think that voice search will replace a lot of the a lot of the normal typing searches that we do now? Phones have overtaken desktop search. More people search the web now through a phone than on a desktop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But still typing. It's easier to do a voice search. It really is. Okay. I've, I've been... Uh, trying as many as I can. Uh, Okay, so you you think you think that this will be practically be the be the future? So we are going to search the internet via via voice more and more compared to what we do today. In addition to the announcement they made about the uh, pixel buds yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, during the translation, they talked about Google Lens and how people will be doing more searches by photograph by taking pictures of things mm -hmm. and there was a patent that went with those too they talked about how uh, they tie in those searches with knowledge base information to uh, better understand the queries and provide results uh, so if you can perform a search by taking a picture of something and saying, what kind of car is that? Where can I get one? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just taking a picture of the car. Uh, we'll see a lot more searches like that. Okay. It will be interesting to see how this uh, develops in the following, in the following years. <laughs> and, uh, um, to approach the end of this uh, podcast, I wanted to ask you what's one person or brand event that influenced your uh, your career, that influenced you the most in your career, if there is one? It's a tough question. Uh, in terms of SEOs, uh, one of the ones who influenced me a lot was Eamon Johns, mm -hmm. uh, known as the Black Knight in forums on the mm -hmm. web, dealing with SEO because he uh, introduced me to a lot of thoughts and ideas about marketing that I wasn't aware of. Uh, and how creative you can be at Introducing concepts and uh, developing them on web pages. What's uh, and the last question? What are the things that you are most proud of, both professionally and personally? If you want to share, we've had a lot of success uh, in the past few years with some clients uh, in terms of transforming. Uh, their businesses to be more successful. Uh, for instance, working with one uh, limo company, which uh, focused primarily upon uh, providing corporate shuttles to businesses. Okay. We help, we help them uh, strengthen. Uh, their limo service and, and uh, everyday consumers, how, how frequently consumers use their business and increase their traffic to their business by like, and their, and their ROI uh, by like 57%, which is ridiculous. It was a lot. Uh, oh. So you took a, a four page apartment website it was it was only four pages and help them sell out the apartment uh, by uh, 
helping them uh, understand the entities involved in the website better. Uh, they're in Northern Virginia. They were right above the uh, Washington Metro line. You could take an elevator to their basement and get on the uh, Metro line from there. They didn't say it in the website. <laughs> they, they didn't include a lot of facts about that type of stuff. But the, if, you, if you hop on the Washington Metro, you can visit 57 different Smithsonian museums from that metro. They're all, okay. they're all free to kids. So if you want something to do with your kids on a Saturday morning, you can hop on the uh, metro, go to a museum. This apartment complex wasn't explaining stuff like that. You know, the benefits of living there and being that accessible to that many types of things. Uh, they were in Northern Virginia. They were next to uh, possibly what is the largest shopping mall in Virginia. It's four stories uh, tall underground. And most people have never heard of it, but it's there. Uh, and they weren't telling people about it in the website. You know, it's one of the things, uh, location is important. You tell people about things like that. So we did an order their site said, these are the types of things that you need to include on your website. You need to tell people more about where you're at, why they should want to live there. There were uh, headquarters of some of the largest companies in the world, like uh, Lockheed Martin was couple blocks away. They weren't telling people, we have these huge places nearby. If you uh, uh, work at those places and you live at our apartments, you have a, a 10 minute commute. Some people might not like 10 minute commute to work, but if you live in the DC area and you have to drive into DC, uh, which is a nightmare drive, you want a quick commute. So, so we, we uh, helped them with the website, help inform people better about what was near it. Uh, sold, uh, helped them sell all the apartments in the apartment complex within a year, really quickly. All via SEO? Yeah. Okay, that's a nice, nice thing. Uh, very hard a... to do, hard to do thing, let's say, <laughs> to, say to sell an entire... Uh building all of the apartments on the VISU. It was effective and they weren't, they, the most exciting thing that they had on the site was about 10 or 12 pictures of a dog park. They had, uh, and <laughs> they weren't telling people important things, which yeah. would help them sell the apartment. And just getting them to understand that they had to do those things was really worthwhile. It, it really got them excited. They were happy customers. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> Very happy customers. Yeah. Okay, uh, Bill. It was a pleasure talking to, uh, talking to you. Do you want to add anything else at the end of this podcast? It was a pleasure talking to you too. So come by, visit me, ask questions. Uh, that's why I've got comment forms and. If you, you know, follow me on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, so on, ask questions there too. Uh, I'm happy to spend time answering them. Okay, so you heard uh, Bill, go ask him your questions. He's willing to answer everyone. Thank you, Bill, again for, for being on our podcast. It was a great pleasure to have you here. And it was uh, very cool to have a discussion with someone about uh, who knows what he's talking about uh, patents in the SEO industry. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you.